Well, everybody, I am here today and joined by someone who I have so much respect for, someone who I have learned a lot from, and I'm looking forward to today to interrogating Tatiana <laughs> James. Tatiana, welcome to the show, I suppose. Thank you, Stephen. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you for the honor of being on your channel. And hopefully I can share something today that will be of value to some people who are watching. And uh, also I want to mention, you know, for those of you who are subscribed to the Marketplace Superheroes channel, you know, Stephen, you have added so much value there and the members in your course. And I've learned so much from you and your programs over the years. So, you know, by following Stephen and modeling him, you guys are really going to accelerate your success. So I just want to say, keep doing what you're doing. And thank you for sharing all of this knowledge with everyone, because it's one thing to benefit from it yourself, but it's another to share it with everyone else. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And again, like, you know, at the end of the day, I'm looking at your channel. I'm learning from you because you have a humongous channel and it's an honor to have you here. Anyway, all the niceties out of the way. <laughs> Let's get down to business. So I wanted to bring you on, Tatiana, to talk about the journey you've been on. You've been building a brand and you've been leveraging Amazon as well as obviously building your own platform on Shopify and stuff like that. And I wanted to, to document that journey because at Marketplace Superheroes, we teach our methodology, which is very much, we go to Amazon, we find products that are low competition that we can improve and we, and we start building a business that way. You've done some of that, I know, but your really massive success has been in building a specific brand for a specific niche. So I thought we'd document that today. And I suppose the best place to start is at, is at the start is like, what got you into e-commerce in the first place? How did you get the idea to start in the particular niche that you've built a really great business in? Yeah, okay. So um, I actually uh, started getting involved with the Amazon uh, e-commerce space back in 2015, really like the end of 2014, but I didn't really, you know, place my order until 2015. Um, I had no idea that, you know, people made money online, didn't know anything about online business prior to that. I was in university. That was the direction I was heading. Um, but I had met my boyfriend at the time, Stefan James, and he had an online business. Um, and so it kind of opened my eyes that there are people who have online businesses and they can make money uh, from the comfort of their own home if they have access to the internet. And um, he had the flexibility to travel the world and, um, and I didn't. And I, I always loved the idea of being able to travel and having kind of that laptop lifestyle or just having the, the time to be able to do those things. And so that's kind of what was my initial incentivization to get into this business was so that I could travel with him and not really kind of hold him back from traveling because I only got a two week vacation every year. Um, so that was the original thought. And then I had tried a few different ways to make money online because there are so many different things, you know, selling on Amazon is only one of many um, and nothing really resonated with me. It wasn't until I came across um, a program that taught about selling products on Amazon. And that immediately was something that kind of hit me. And I was like, that's really cool. I like the idea of creating a tangible product, something that I've designed. I, I like to, it's a way for me to express um, my creativity. And um, so that the, th the idea of that was really interesting for me, very intriguing. Um, but I didn't know really what the upsides were of this business. I didn't know that people were making six, seven figures, even eight figures selling products on Amazon. I just kind of thought, maybe I'll make a couple hundred bucks a month. Maybe I can replace my part-time income. That'd be awesome. And so I started off really small um, because I was like, you know, this is a, a business. I'm going to try it. We'll see what happens. But I'm not going to invest my life savings into it because yeah. that was a risk I wasn't willing to take. So I decided to, you know, accept a, an amount of money aside, a small amount of money. And, um, and I started to do product research, learning about how to find viable products to sell on Amazon, how to create a product opportunity list. And of all those products, I went with the, the cheapest product I could find. It was like 20 cents a unit. And I decided, you know, there were other products that I had more interest in and more passion, I, I would say around, but I decided to go with that product because um, it was the least, the most inexpensive and that would reduce wow. my risk with the business. And so at 20 cents a unit, my initial order was really inexpensive. And I also realized that because this is my first business that I'm likely going to make a lot of mistakes. You know, you yeah. can't expect to not make mistakes when you're doing anything for the first time. It's, there's always a learning curve. 
And so I thought that this will be kind of like my product. That's, you know, the training wheels, you know, when you have a kid, you don't expect them to be able to ride a bike straight away. You give them knee pads and wrist guards and a helmet and some training wheels. And eventually they will graduate to, to riding the bike. So that's how I, I really got started with a simple, small product. Um, it was selling at $10 a piece on Amazon. And, um, and then it, it, from there, I moved on to a second and a third product. And, um, and each time I graduated to kind of the next product, it was a, kind of a more expensive product and yeah. something that I could build more of a brand around. And the third product is the product where I eventually did build my brand around. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say, Tatiana, like your goal from the off always was mainly to build a brand or was that something you grew into or was that your initial focus? Yeah, actually, I did grow into it. It wasn't initially something that I had thought, you know, I want to build a brand. Um, It was originally I was just looking at learning the process of selling on Amazon and just launching a product and, you know, just making some money from it. I wasn't really thinking very long term. Um, It wasn't until with my third product, I saw more of an opportunity with that particular product to build a brand. So my first two products, you know, there's some products that you're, they're not as brandable, if that's a word, (laughs) you know, they're not (laughs) as like interesting to, you know, build a brand around where it's like, where people are going to want to follow you on social media and, and, you know, you know, it's, it's not the same. And so with the third product, I really got a lot of ideas with that product. And so I was excited to you know, take the extra steps and and put in the extra work that's involved in building the brand. Very cool. No, I like that. And that that particular uh, product that you're talking about now, that's still the the products that are being sold currently in that brand, or is that a, was that like a a different product you started with and then you changed? Yeah. So originally, that product was um, I can say it. So it was a waist trainer, yep. and yep. so this was a product when I was doing product research that you know, anyone who is um, kind of a a guru or someone who's experienced with FBA would say, you know, don't, don't private label this product. It's a tough product. It's a tough market. Um, And that's because waist trainers, like they have to fit the person perfectly. Um, There's so many different um, sizing variations. Um, There's, it's a lot, it's a complex, complex product. But when I looked on Amazon, I had seen that there's just, there's no sellers who really optimize their listings. It seemed like um, there was nobody who was really implementing a lot of the marketing skills that I learned from the first two yeah. products that I launched. It's yeah. like, you know, there, it's not optimized. I could go in here and I could really shake things up and really build a brand and leverage what I know. Um, so, so that's, I originally started with just private labeling that product and just finding a manufacturer from China, um, as is didn't modify the packaging, didn't want to, cause it was more of an expensive product, you know, more expensive than the 20 cents a unit. And so I didn't want to, again, invest a lot before I proved my concept. That's the way I do it. I don't want to put in a huge, even though I had experience from the first two products, I just still didn't want to invest a lot into the initial inventory, um, sure. because I didn't have the experience. So So with that product, I just originally private labeled it, but every time I reordered, I would slightly modify something. So I would either, you know, based on the reviews. So as I started to get more organic reviews from customers, some people would rate it five stars, some people one star and okay, what, what's wrong with it. And so I would make small modifications. Um, and eventually it kind of turned into, um, you know, it's still a private label product, but it's very unique to my brand. You know, that makes sense. And again, I've seen, I've seen the growth and we'll, we'll obviously talk about that, the growth of that brand as well. And yeah, like, I mean, you're right. It's a competitive market. As you said, you saw a way to improve, bring in additional marketing strategies, because as I always say, and it's true, you know, when you get into more competitive markets, you do have to bring uh, the marketing up. You've got to have a, you you got to start building a lot of different things that you are great at doing social media and stuff like that. And would you say again, like, I don't know, but you'll tell me, was this a product like that you would have been a user of anyway, or was it a product you became a user of because you started selling it? I, I never asked you that question before. Well, it's funny you say that because um, the the way I actually discovered this product wasn't through the traditional product research. Um, At that time, I was still selling my first and second products, but I was kind of like taking a break in a way from doing product research. I said, you know what, like this is, I was getting a little bit irritated because I wasn't finding products that I wanted to sell. And I was like, well, let me just pause and let me just think of this from a different perspective. Sometimes we get so focused on one thing that we're doing and we don't really kind of look at things from a a broader perspective. And so I thought, 
um, you know, I'm a customer, I buy products on Amazon. What's a product that I have purchased in the past. Yeah. And so I looked at my purchase uh, order history and that's, pro th those are products that I purchased in the past. And I noticed I pr purchased multiple items and I asked yeah. myself, why was I purchasing multiple waist trainers? And it was because they kept on breaking down. They kept on, the quality was not great. And so I realized that, Hey, you know, there's a reason I could go in here and I could improve the quality of this product and, um, and, and, and possibly surpass the other sellers in terms of quality uh, sure. because I'm a user of the product. So I know yeah. what works. I know how it's supposed to feel. I know how it's supposed to fit. Um, yeah. And so it was, it was better for me in that sense because I understood the product and the, and, and what its use was. The customer. Yeah. I mean, cause that's, mm -hmm. that's, the, I think that's the thing, you know, like if I came along and I started importing <laughs> weight trainers, right. man, I'm not going to have a clue. Like I'm just going to go with what I think and all of that. Whereas, you know, in that kind of competitive space, when it's a very specific product, if that's what I think it takes, it takes someone like you to come along, really understand it, really hone it. And then, you know, start to build a brand around it as well. So that's, that's awesome. And I love you're talking about review mining as well to obviously improve the, the quality of the product, mm -hmm. get feedback from people. You're trying it yourself. So you're a customer of your product as well. That's mm -hmm. really cool. And again, yeah, it's different to what a lot of our, our, our members are selling different products that aren't as complicated, aren't as competitive, but I suppose, suppose the thing to learn so far here is like, yes, it's absolutely possible, but it takes a little bit more work and, and not in a negative sense in a positive sense. Mm -hmm. So, so at this time, uh, Tatiana, you're obviously driving sales on Amazon. Now things are growing. Um, and at that point, did you start to build your own platform? It sounds like you started to build it kind of early on and you started to build up an email list and things like that. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, that's right. So with that product, um, I, I started a YouTube channel which was something that I never had thought about doing, was never someone who liked yeah. to be in front of the camera, especially so speaking funny. in front of the camera. And those first videos I published on YouTube, they're not there anymore. They're, they were very, <laughs> <laughs> just not, not great. But yeah. um, I just kind of, again, I saw, you know what, you know, sometimes you just got to suck it up and do it. And I saw yeah. the opportunity with social media and with YouTube. And again, I looked at my competitors and I saw, wow, they're doing extremely well on Amazon. They're selling hundreds of thousands of dollars because it was a very high competition um, niche, yes. but yet they're doing that without leveraging social media. And that's the direction that we're heading. And so I thought, Hey, if I can come in um, and, and if I can have more of a presence online, especially and particularly on YouTube, then I don't need to necessarily have, um, you know, the email list or everything that they have built. I don't need all of those reviews on Amazon. I don't need all of the social proof because um, video especially is very powerful and, yeah. um, especially with a, a product that is demonstrable a product that, um, people yeah. kind of, you know, it's hard to buy clothing online because you want to try it on. You want to see how it feels on your skin. You want to see how it fits. And so if you have a product like that, to be able to create a video, show it, you know, show the, the, the back and the front, put it on, try it on, squeeze it. Give, give the customer, yeah. show them the experience that they would want to have if they were in a retail store. And yeah. so I did that and um, I just published a bunch of videos just talking about waist training, how to use a waist trainer, you know, the, my particular product, the benefits of it, the quality, just like every video I could think of, you know, yeah. they were short videos, but I was also doing some keyword research to see what would rank better on YouTube yeah. and just publish things. And I said, you know what, like initially nobody was watching them, but sure. because I did the keyword research, when people would type in how to wear a waist trainer, how to wash a waist trainer, what is waist training, my yeah. videos started to rank. And eventually uh, what happened was anytime you would type in the keyword waist trainer, there would be like five or six of my videos from my YouTube channel right there. And yeah. so the YouTube channel really dominated for the keyword waste training, which led everyone to the Amazon store. And Amazing. so that was really beneficial because um, I led people from a different website, from YouTube, a different platform to the Amazon platform. And I think Amazon likes that because they see that you're bringing in external traffic. Sure, and yeah. then people would, the best part was that people would directly buy from me, um, yeah. even though I had fewer reviews. Um, because they're not comparing my product to other people's products on Amazon because yeah, they have problem. seen it on YouTube. Yeah, exactly. That makes all sense. And would you have said that the um, waist training keywords were competitive at that time? Not on YouTube. No. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So that yeah. was, that was the opportunity with it was because yeah. nobody was the only people on YouTube who were 
posting videos about this were customers. So they yeah. were just kind of like, you know, sharing their, their progress, sharing their before and after pictures. But I was like, there's no brands, there's no companies here who are, who are leveraging this as a marketing platform. And yeah. so that's where the opportunity is. And I think it's important for anyone who has whatever product you decide to sell, see where the gaps are, because, you know, it's likely that there are some places, some different platforms that you could, um, you know, there isn't that much competition there and you could easily rise to the top with that. And that yeah. really helped me, um, by leveraging social media and, and the YouTube channel, it really helped me build the business with a, a low budget by having really high profit margins. Cause for yeah. all these years, I never spent any money on advertising. The yeah. only advertising that I did was in the last couple of years, like a small amount of money in influencer marketing, where I was hiring other influencers to share the product and the brand. Yeah. So it really was um, beneficial in, in that sense as well. I know it makes a lot of sense. And I, again, like, uh, I'm obviously not very knowledgeable about this market. You're much more than I, but at the same time, like I understand YouTube, I understand everything <clears throat> we're talking about. And I, I, I definitely agree with what you're saying. I mean, it makes total sense that when you can really come on and give a lot of content value on a channel and build that following, even now for me, like obviously I've seen your channel grow and I've learned a lot from that. And I've made, you know, some videos, just you, some of the ideas you might've had of kind of, Oh, that'd be cool. What's my take on that and whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's been amazing. Like even my marketplace superheroes, like the growth of what we've been doing has been huge because mm -hmm. as you say, yeah, people trust you, you're making content, you're, you're giving them something. And so that makes a ton of sense. And I think as well, we can pinpoint here that, yeah, like, I mean, if you're selling something like the little feet that cover the underside of a washing machine to stop her from scraping the floor, that's right. going to be a tricky YouTube channel. Whereas what you're talking about, it's a product that, you know, females typically, again, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm going to say typically females, yeah. <laughs> you know, right. today, um, use the product. And obviously, like, it's a, it's a very much like a, you could say it's a passion driven market. You would know more than I, but it's very much like I'm very interested in this particular thing. I'm going to watch multiple videos and, and yeah, I mean, it makes total sense. So you have this channel, you're building it, you're sending some traffic to Amazon sales are growing. And at that point, did you kind of say, Hey, I'm going to go all in on this range now and start to build a range or what was the next step for you with the evolution of the brand? Yeah, exactly. So initially when I launched the product on Amazon, the private label product, I originally just launched one color, which was a hot pink color. The decision with that was kind of ridiculous. You know, usually you look on Amazon to see what's already selling and, you know, you try and accumulate data so that you know what product to sell. But I thought everyone's selling black waist trainers on Amazon. I'm going to yeah. sell a hot pink one. So, I mean, it, it wasn't the smartest de decision, but I did stand out. My listing did stand out. It was different. Um, but then I realized, you know, I have got to start expanding the product line because, um, you know, that's not everyone likes pink. So, um, but I did start with, I think five different sizes because us women, you know, we have, we're, we're all shaped different shapes and sizes and we have to accommodate everyone. And, um, then I expanded to 10 different sizes. So from five different sizes to 10 different sizes. And then I started to add in various colors. Um, so yeah. black and beige, um, purple and and then from there I expanded to different patterns so different patterns of the same waist trainer and from then I started to grow the product line with like different types of body shapewear so not just the the waist trainers but different types of body shapewear and also just kind of accessories so it, it grew with time but I didn't actually um, when I started to um, create expand the product line I only sold three different variations on Amazon so I had about 50 different SKUs on Amazon, but I decided not to add more because it started to get, it started to get a little bit complex for me on Amazon. I had, I had a challenge where uh, yeah. my inventory at the Amazon warehouse got mixed up and customers were receiving the wrong size. And because I was with FBA, like it was a hard time to get Amazon to sort it out. Um, I had to yeah. end up shipping the inventory to my place and sorting out and shipping it back. So that's when I started to transition to um, selling on my own website. And so I opened up a WordPress um, site originally, yep. um, which was, you know, kind of a nightmare. <laughs> I decided <laughs> later to, to change to Shopify, which was yep. very, very good decision. Um, I was spending a lot of money with developers on WordPress uh, with Shopify. I could do a lot of things myself. 
Yeah. And um, so on Shopify, I started to really expand the, the product line and it made things so much easier because selling on your own website, obviously the goal is not to always be on Amazon. You want to start on Amazon. It's a yeah. wonderful platform. If I hadn't started on Amazon, I would not have the business I have today without a doubt. Yeah. Um, it was a huge opportunity, but I don't want to have all my eggs in one basket. And yeah. I don't want to just be 100% dependent on Amazon's platform because I don't own anything. I don't own my listing. I don't own, you know, it's really in the hands of Amazon. And at least with my website, I have more control. I was able to control the return policy, which with Amazon, you know, you've got that 30 day yeah, um, unconditional, you know, return policy. I was yeah. able to control more of my marketing. So there's, there's a lot more control there and um, also can improve the kind of the customer's experience in that sense. Yeah. I, I think in fairness though, when you're building what you have built, that makes complete sense. I mean, it really right. does. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't argue that at all. And some people might say, oh, Stephen, you're being, a, uh, you're kind of saying one thing and meaning another. Definitely not. Like, I mean, it, as I said, we do the marketplace approach and what we do at Marketplace Superheroes is the brand approach. And when you've got a brand that's, that's you're getting to multi-channel, it's called multi-channel for a reason, right? It's multiple channels. Amazon's just one channel. And as you rightly pointed out there, Tatiana, and what I think I heard you say is as you're, you start adding more SKUs, more variations, more different things. It was nice to have the control on your site to be able to let people know about the different variations that you have rather than have all these different SKUs all over the place in FBA. I, like, I, I think that's what you meant when you said like you were getting more complex in your variations and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And also I just, um, yeah, I had some a, a few troubles with Amazon yeah, that were yeah, hard that's to that's sort true. out. Um, yeah, but and yeah, we like, all had those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's, okay. it's one of those things. You hate For them and sure. you love them. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So at this point in time, then, like you have a much bigger range in this uh, in this this niche. You mentioned you started adding in more and more products. And so I suppose at that point in time, was that a case of like, I'm going to utilize my own channel. I'm going to push a lot of uh, traffic there from influencer marketing, stuff like that. Then if people find it on Amazon, they find it on Amazon. Was that kind of the, the approach you took at that point? Yeah. So at that point, um, I had, a, I had made a big shift from my customer base on Amazon to Shopify. Well, really it's not that my Amazon customers moved to Shopify. It's that I just grew my, my reach. Yeah. And, um, and so people, I had the majority of my sales on uh, Shopify, I think like 80% of my sales and, um, a big portion, a big reason was cause I wasn't trying to market, Hey, buy the product on Amazon yeah. because at that point, you know, I wanted to still have a presence on Amazon because there's a, a large customer base who wants to shop on Amazon. They trust the platform. They get the prime, you know, shipping. Um, they yeah. get the good return policy. So I still wanted to have that um, and to kind of maintain all of my listing, my reviews, all the, everything that I built up. But my, my profits on Shopify were significantly higher. So yeah. it, it was a, just a no brainer for me to direct traffic uh, more to my website. Mm -hmm. And so, there were people who inevitably would search for the brand on Amazon and then they would buy it from there. Yeah. Uh, that's great. And so did you, uh, did you outsource your fulfillment and do you outsource your fulfillment on your own site as well? Or how do you do that? Yeah. So, um, so with Amazon, it's fulfilled by Amazon, of course, yeah. but, um, for my own website, I found a, a fulfillment center in Florida. So I just yeah. did a simple Google search and I just looked for a fulfillment center. Um, I picked Florida, I'm not really sure why. I think I had a large customer base. I was looking at my order history from Amazon, <laughs> lots of people who were there. So I thought, oh, that makes sense. Why not? Um, yeah. So, and, and I found uh, this fulfillment center. And so I just, they store all of the inventory. They do the same thing as what Amazon does. They pay, yeah. pack and ship, but they don't provide customer support. So that's the only thing. And I'm fine with that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. So, I mean, now with kind of fast forward to today, obviously you've been documenting a lot of the growth on your own channel. Uh, this, this brand is, it's, it's a, it's a pretty big deal now. <laughs> yeah, it's grown a lot. Um, it's evolved with time, but there are also a lot of growth pains. Um, I, I never really expected the brand to have grown this much at this stage. And so we have a, a very small team, like a team, like there's nobody full time. Uh, well, there's full time, but there's no employees. Everyone's a freelancer. I've hired everyone from upwork.com. Um, everyone, uh, most of ever, everyone who works in the, uh, on a team is from the Philippines and they're, they work like 60 hour weeks. They're really hardworking people and they're amazing. Um, they're all women, which is really fun. So we have a really great, um, team energy. Um, but it's, 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 you know, at, when you're having like 2000 orders per month, that's a lot of 
new customers and a lot of customer support. So our biggest challenge is the customer support. We've got like 1600 emails in our inbox right now that need to be answered and they're not getting that 24 hour response time that that's the standard that I want for the company, for the business. And I want customers to have a great experience. So those are, that's one of the biggest challenges uh, with the growth is just keeping up with the, the high demands of the customers, especially with one mistake I kind of made with this brand was I told everyone, Hey, before you place their order, contact us. Like we're sure. going to help you out to make sure that we, you get the right yeah. size. And when we were small is like, that was sustainable. We were able to provide like a really great customer experience, but now, um, you know, you need kind of a, a much larger customer support team who is trained yeah. and qualified to, to to recommend sizes to people. So it wasn't the best thing. I I didn't really think that out. Um, So customer support has been kind of a growing pain, um, but also inventory management. That was something I really struggled with initially on Amazon. um, I was always out of stock. You know, I always had, you know, one size, two sizes, three sizes out of stock. And it's because um, I always, in the beginning, I had a lot of cash flow challenges. And I think a lot of people who have e-commerce businesses um, come at some point in time, experience cash flow problems. And it's because it's a good thing in a way because your business is growing, right? So your, your business yeah. is growing. So you want to place a larger inventory order. And then to do that, you kind of have to invest pretty much all of your profits back in. Um, and as your business grows each month, you have to place a larger order. And so, um, for me, I was just trying to like, you know, I never took out any loans or anything. I just, the original, you know, few hundred dollars that I invested in the business just always got reinvested back. And in some ways that delayed my growth because of the cash flow challenges. If I had a little bit extra cash, I would have been able to place larger orders, which meant I wouldn't have been out of stock all the time. Um, So I think, uh, yeah, that was another challenge is just having better inventory management. And eventually I hired an inventory manager because I just realized, you know, one thing in business you got to realize is like, you're going to be good at some things. You're going to be amazing at some things and some things are going to suck at, and you've got to be able to have the self-awareness to say, yeah, I'm not good at this. And let me hire someone who's much more talented, much better at doing this because they're going to help me with this challenge. But it should pay for itself in no time, you know, as I'm sure it has, you know, so it makes total sense. This is it's awesome. I mean, I'm just, I'm loving it. I'm incredibly inspired. I'm sure everybody who's watching is too. And I know everybody will want me to ask the next question, which is, Tatiana, I'm, I'm starting and I'm interested in building my own brand like you've done. Where, where do I start? How, how do I how do I get into this? Like, what, what do I do? Because it's maybe a different process to what I've learned already. How would I go down this particular path? Where should I start? Yeah. I mean, I don't think it's that different. So, you know, I've been through the marketplace superheroes course, amazing program. And you know, it's not, you can follow all the same steps. I think it's just that when it comes to picking your product, you kind of have to explore the product a little bit and kind of say, okay, like how you got to think like, how could I market this product? That was a big one. That was a big determining factor for me in picking this product because I knew that I could use the product and I could market it personally. That was a choice, not, not necessary to, to build a business, but Um, yeah, really thinking about, you know, is this product something that could be, you know, really great on like a Facebook video ad where people are scrolling Facebook and they just have to stop and watch this video ad because it's so compelling. It's so intriguing. Um, or is this a product that would do really well on Pinterest? Is it like an arts and crafts type of product? You know, who's the audience, who's the niche, where are they spending their time? Um, and you know, and obviously like there are a lot of products, you know, that aren't going to be fit to build a brand around doesn't mean that they're not uh, viable product opportunities. In some cases, it's like, you can make more money with those products because they're essentials in the house. Like for example, you know, like plain and simple things like those are no brainers. In some ways you don't really have to sell people on those products because they're going straight to Amazon thinking like, I need to buy this for the house today. Like you don't have to market to them. They know what they want to buy. But with a product like what I have, there is more of a selling factor there. And so you have to know how you're going to sell that product. So sometimes we can get so caught up in just um, the product and um, launching the product on Amazon. But really like the biggest part of this and the biggest part for me and my business, the most challenging where I had to grow the most was learning how to market because I wasn't a marketer. I wouldn't have called myself a marketer, but once you get into the e-commerce space, like you got to learn how to market your product because otherwise nobody will ever discover it. Yeah. And so when you say marketing, would you, I would say like, again, you're, you're thinking about the audience continually. That's a big thing that people can take away from what you just said. 
I think as well, people might be wondering, do you mean like I'm thinking that you're, because I, I, I can tell what you're thinking, but it just, they can kind of say, you're thinking about the channels, where am I going to put this product that other people can see? Where can I, where can I get in front of that audience? Is, is like what you mean when you think about how can I market my product? Where can I go with this thing? And what angle can I take with this thing? Would that be right? Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it. But also another component I would say is like, what can I, what's unique about this product or what can I improve with this product? How can I make it different than everything else? Because mm-hmm. we're, we're not inventors, we're not inventing things. So we are private labeling, but we have to have some sort of X factor, something that's going to make us different than all the other brands. And so yep. that's also something you really got to think about because, um, you know, some of the best brands that I know, it's they've found their, their X factor. They found something that makes them really different and gives me a reason to purchase from them over everyone else. And so thinking about that, when you're doing your product research and starting to get ideas and brainstorming, writing it down, I think that's really how building the brand starts. It all starts with before you pick the product, thinking of different ways that you could um, go about that. And, and so for you with your brand, as you were mentioning earlier on, you were looking at reviews and stuff like that. Would you be able to give people an idea of maybe what were some of the things that made your brand have an X factor, would you say? Yeah, so I would say there's, there's a few different components here. And so there's different ways that you could, there's so many different things you can do, right? So um, the first one was the fact that um, I decided to create the YouTube channel and, you know, have more of a social presence. Yep. I didn't really see many other brands on Amazon who did that. So that was very unique. And that really was what I think helped grow my business the most. Um, the second thing was um, with time, I started to change the product. So if, if you looked at my products today and you looked at the other ones selling on Amazon, there are visible differences in the shape of the product, the structure, yeah. the, the, you know, it's three layers instead of two layers, the boning, like it's, it's very unique. So I have changed it over time. And the third component is I decided to create a community. So a Facebook community, which um, it now has like 24,000 women in there uh-huh. and it's a place where people can go and can just share their story, share their journey. I realized that, you know, you really have to understand who your audience is. You can't just think of like, okay, I'm going to sell this product and I have no idea who I'm selling it to, or, or just broadly say, I'm just selling to women. Like you got to really understand who is the woman who's buying this product or the man who's buying this product. Who are they? What do they want? What's their journey? And so when you can really understand the customer's journey, you realize that they're not just buying this product. Like they have goals, they have a vision, they have a plan for their life. Why are they buying this product? For me, I realized that anyone buying this product, well, there are many different reasons people buy those products, but a big portion, port, many of your people want to buy it to slim down their waistline, maybe lose some weight. So they're on a, a journey of health fitness. And so I realized, okay, what can I do? What products, services, or resources can I provide to this customer to help them along that journey? from A to Z so that I can be there every step of the way. And one of those things that I came up with, which was free to create was the Facebook community. And so I felt like, you know, there's nobody else who really has a Facebook community that's niche about, well, there are actually people who have Facebook communities, but they weren't very large. And um, that's niche about waist training where people can just share their photos, share their stories, get support. And that actually made much more like a really big difference um, in the sales of the business. I was shocked by this because if you go in there, you know, we don't market the product in there. We don't post the product. We don't share the sales. We don't do any kind of marketing. It's a laissez-faire. We just let the members communicate and talk amongst themselves and they sell the products for us. They yep. tell new members where to buy the products. They tell them what size to get. It's really amazing. So it's an ecosystem building a Facebook community. You've got to create an ecosystem that's going to flourish. Um, yep. And so those, I would say those were the three things that made the brand um, unique and they were developed with time. It didn't happen all at once. Love it. Well, I mean, I, I've learned a ton in, in this session. I, I, I genuinely, I've learned actually a lot that I'm going to take forward with me and uh, take a look at because I think there's some really great ideas in here, Tatiana. So again, thank you for being so transparent. So for covering so much ground in, in like 30 minutes, like, I mean, I've learned, and the guys, everybody watching, get down in the comments and thank Tatiana for today and <laughs> for what you've learned. Cause I'm telling you, like, I mean, genuinely people would charge a lot of money for what you've been talking about, you know, going from how to figure out the product and how to figure out the audience, 
where to put your where to put your products, where to put your brand, how to think of it. I mean, we, we covered a ton of ground today. So I'm so inspired by your story and obviously the continued success you're having in not only uh, this business, but obviously in your your sharing of the journey business as well, I suppose is a is a business of itself. <laughs> Thank and, uh, you. Yeah, it's awesome, yeah, Tanya. Thank Thanks for you. your time. Yeah, no, and, I, and thank you as well. And, um, you know, I just think for everyone who's watching, you know, everyone is just here because you, you either want to start a business or you have a business. And I just encourage you just to keep at it. There's, it's going to be tough. It's not easy, but you know, you're already putting in this effort at your day job and you're putting in work in the hours. And it's like, if you can create something of your own, it's, you know, start small. It can really grow into something that has a possibility to change your life for the better. And, you know, when I first started, I really didn't know what the potential was. Um, but I, I started to learn more and it's just really amazing. This opportunity we all have this opportunity to build businesses from the comfort of our home with the computers. It's like so cool. And so let's, you know, let's do it. You know, we all wish we started sooner. So I'm just like, you know, if I can share and if I can share my story and, you know, share what worked for me, great, because even if it helps one person, that's, that's all I can ask for. So I would just encourage oh. anyone to get, get started because, you know, this is, is a growing opportunity, but you know, the sooner you start, the better it's going to be. Well, that's it. And again, like your, your business is in what some people might say is a very small area of like, you know, in waste training, it's not mm -hmm. like weight loss like there's a huge thing it's a very specific niche and it's just a great story you know where it is today and uh it's a very focused niche uh, product range and obviously you're growing it into other product types as well which is which is huge and it's uh yeah it's a flourishing business so uh thanks again for for coming on for sharing the story i know tons of people are going to go subscribe to your channel after this they definitely should uh, I'm a subscriber as well. And uh, yeah, thanks for your time. I really appreciate Thank it. You. I know you're busy and thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephen. Take care.